To understand how JavaScript can respond to user events, we first need to understand a little bit more about functions. It's often said that functions are first-class citizens in JavaScript. This means that functions can be treated like any other data type, such as a number, a string, or an object. For example, you can pass a function as an argument into another function the same way you might pass in a number or a string. This might sound a bit strange, but once you have tried it a few times, you'll get the hang of it, and you also unlock one of JavaScript's most powerful features. Passing a function around in this way is how we can control when and how it runs. So right now, let's get a better understanding of this idea with a simple example, then in the upcoming lectures we'll see how this applies to the real-world applications. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript DOM. And then open the index.html file in the browser. In the index.html file, remember to link app.js file. The first thing I want to do now is to create a temporary JavaScript file to write some codes and do some experiments. So I'll create a new JavaScript file called test.js. Then at the bottom of the index.html file, I'll add a new script tag that links to the test.js file we just created. I'll save the change. Then in the test.js file, let's play with functions and try to understand how they work. Now you are probably familiar with this style of writing a function called a function declaration. And we can call this say hello function by using parentheses like so and passing the string hello as an argument. I'll save the change. Refresh the page, open the console, and the message hello displays in the console. Now let's go back, delete this last line, and then write another function called caller. Notice the new caller function accepts two parameters, say something and text. So it's expecting say something to be a function and text to be an acceptable argument to pass to say something. So inside the caller, we called say something and passed in text as an argument. In other words, we can pass function into caller and caller will run it for us. Now, passing a function into a function may seem a bit strange at first, but this idea turns out to be a very powerful one in JavaScript and you'll see this happen all the time. Now, let's call our new caller function and pass in say hello as the first argument. Then pass in a message hello world as the second argument. Now I just want to point out again that these two parameters are very different data types. One is a function and the other is a string, but they're both first class citizens. So they can be passed as arguments in the same way. I'll save the change, refresh the page, and we see the message hello world in the console. Now let's take this one step further we can actually pass a function directly into another function. So I'll go ahead and select and cut the say hello function and paste it right here as a direct argument to a caller. Now you can leave the name say hello here, but oftentimes you'll see function expressions written without any names like this. This is what's called an anonymous function. So now I'll also update the message to hello guys. I'll save the change, refresh the page, and we see the message hello guys in the console. Good. Now the question is, why would we ever want to pass a function into another function? That's a great question, and we'll look at that in the next lecture.